So welcome to lecture series on advanced linear algebra. In my last lecture, I have introduced the concept of inner product for different vector spaces. To understand the concept or length of a vectors, let me introduce one more terminology called norm of a vector please. Norm of a vector, what is that? Let V be a vector space over a field capital F. So, the field here either real number or complex number please. Let alpha belongs to V be any element. Then the positive square root of inner product of alpha and alpha is called as norm of alpha. Mathematically or symbolically we used to denote as a norm of alpha is like this. This norm of alpha it can be considered as the length of the vector alpha. Let me also define another terminology called quadratic form. Let V be a vector space over the field capital F. Quadratic form is a function, function which assign each vector alpha to square of the norm of alpha. This one please. Now using this uh, terminology norm or quadratic form, we will see the characteristics of the inner product. We have if a norm of alpha plus beta whole square. If I consider this one, this is equal to what? This is equal to according to definitions, it is equal to inner product of alpha plus beta comma alpha plus beta. In fact, if I consider norm of alpha plus minus beta whole square, then I also have to consider minus here, minus here also. So, this is equal to according to definition of the inner product, this will be called to inner product of alpha and alpha plus minus beta plus minus beta and alpha plus minus beta please. So, this is equal to we will have this is equal to inner product of alpha, alpha then plus minus because the positive quad real numbers 1. I will take and take it out. So, plus minus inner product of alpha and beta and then this one I will have plus minus inner product of beta alpha and then plus minus into plus minus. So, it will be basically plus inner product of beta beta. Okay. So, using the the axioms which what I have used in the definition of the inner product, I can write down that norm of alpha plus minus beta whole square as inner product of alpha alpha plus minus inner product of alpha beta plus minus inner product of beta alpha plus inner product of beta beta. 
So, according to the definition of norm, this is equal to quadratic form of alpha that is equal to norm of alpha square. Then plus minus inner product of alpha beta plus minus inner product of beta alpha and plus norm of beta square we are having like this. But inner product of alpha alpha beta and inner product of beta alpha is basically I mean if I consider z is a complex number the z and z plus z uh, z plus z bar. So, this will be equal to norm of alpha square plus minus 2 times real part of the inner product of alpha beta. Because z plus z bar equal to 2 times of real part of z only x plus i y plus x minus i y it will cancel out basically 2 x. So, that is why okay, plus norm of beta square please. So, I am getting norm of alpha plus minus beta whole square that is equal to something like this. So, we are getting norm of alpha plus beta whole square equal to norm of alpha square plus norm of beta square plus 2 times of real component of inner product of alpha beta and whereas norm of alpha minus beta that whole square equal to again norm of alpha square plus norm of beta square minus 2 times of real component of inner product of alpha beta. So, if I consider this is 1, this is 2. So, from 1 and 2 we have you know norm of alpha plus beta square plus norm of alpha minus beta square equal to 2 times of norm of alpha square plus norm of beta square. Just simply adding I am getting this, but if I subtract 2 from 1 then we are getting norm of alpha plus beta whole square minus norm of alpha minus beta whole square. This is equal to how much? 4 times real component of inner product of alpha beta. So, this implies the real component of inner product of alpha beta equal to 1 by 4 norm of alpha plus beta whole square minus norm of alpha minus beta whole square. Okay. We also know inner product of alpha beta this is equal to real part of inner product of alpha beta plus i times real part of alpha and i beta because i times imaginary part of inner product of alpha beta that is basically equal to real part of inner product of alpha i beta. Okay. So, we have like this. So, this implies real part of alpha i beta that will be equal to according to these definitions if I consider this is star then I will have real part of alpha i beta is equal to 1 by 4 alpha plus i beta whole square minus alpha minus i beta whole square this one. So, finally, we see that inner product of alpha beta can be written as 1 by 4 
alpha plus beta your whole square minus alpha minus beta your whole square plus i by 4 norm of alpha plus i beta whole square minus norm of alpha minus i beta a whole square. And this can be written in a compact form as a sigma n equal to 1 to 4 you know one can write i to the power n by 4 and norm of alpha plus i to the power n into beta whole square. Please check it. Okay. And this is called the polarization identity. This is called as polarization identity. Polarization identity, please. Okay. Okay. So, we have seen the relation between the inner product and norm or quadratic form also. Now, definitely we shall utilize this relation to understand the inner product more deeply. But before that, we have a one question. Suppose in a vector space, suppose in a vector space V of dimension say n, that the final number vector space is given to us. And suppose an order basis is given to us in that vector space, is it possible to express the inner product which define that vector space in terms of matrix. Uh, let me consider like this, let V be a finite dimensional vector space over the field capital F. Let this be an inner product and inner product defined in V. It is given to us. Let B equal to alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha n be an order basis. basis. Even if I do not give the order basis, up if I stick to only first two lines that V be a finite dimensional vector space over the field and an inner product is defined over the vector space V, my question is, is it possible to express the inner product in terms of matrix concept? So, answer is yes, it is possible provided an order basis is given to uh, uh, given to us please. Suppose the an order basis of the B is given to us. So, in that case we will be able to express the inner product of the vector space B explicitly by a matrix. Okay. So, let me clarify this uh, claim please. So, let B be an order basis for vector space V. Let G K J equal to inner product of alpha J and alpha K, inner product of alpha J alpha K because inner product is given to us. So, I shall utilize that given inner product to define a scalar g k j like this. Okay. So, now uh, for different value or values of j and k for j varying from 1 to n k varies from 1 to n, I will have a matrix capital G of n cross n order. I will show that the inner product what is given to us in the vector space B can be explicitly defined in terms of this matrix G please. And this matrix will have some typical characteristics that is it is Hermitians and invertibles. 
So, let us see all this thing please. So, star introduced star introduced says uh, and matrix and n cross n matrix G claim G is an invertible and Hermitian matrix. Then matrix. Let alpha belongs to V be any element, any element and beta also belongs to V B uh, also an element. Let alpha equal to sigma x i alpha i i equal to 1 to n and so that is coordinate matrix of alpha with respect to order basis b equal to capital x which is equal to x1 x2 xn transpose and let beta equal to sigma yj alpha j j equal to 1 to n that is coordinate matrix of beta with respect to order basis b equal to say capital y which is equal to y1 y2 and yn transpose place. Uh, so, now inner product of alpha beta will be equal to what? This will be equal to inner product of alpha equal to sigma x i alpha i i equal to 1 to n comma sigma y j alpha j j equal to 1 to n. Not to confuse with the i as a uh, square root of minus 1, uh, this is I can rewrite this is equal to also you know sigma say x k alpha k k equal to 1 to n and this is your y j and alpha j j equal to 1 to n this one. Okay. So, this implies that inner product of alpha beta equal to sigma k equal to 1 to n y j alpha j j equal to 1 to n. So, I can write down the inner product of alpha beta equal to like this. So, this is equal to again by the definition of the inner product I can write down this is equal to inner product of k equal to 1 to n and then again j equal to 1 to n yeah s k will be there. So, x k and y j bar with their scalar quantity I will take it out and then alpha k and alpha j in our part this one place. So, this is equal to sigma k equal to 1 to n sigma j equal to 1 to n x k and y j bar and inner product of alpha k and alpha j. So, this is equal to one can write down y star, y star means y transpose and bar conjugate transpose basically you know and this is okay this is let me write down this one this is equal to simply k equal to 1 to n j equal to 1 to n x k and y j bar and this is, is equal to g 
this is equal to g j k this is equal to g j k. So, this will give you basically y star g matrix into capital X because this is scalar quantity and dimension 1 and we can see by if I consider y equal to what I have considered here y is a column the transpose mean basically row then this multiply the g is n cross n matrix and x is a column I will have basically diamonds is a 1 cross 1 matrix or this is scalar quantity place. So, we see inner product of alpha beta equal to y star g x please. So, this implies inner product of alpha alpha equal to x star g x which is strictly greater than 0 for alpha not equal to 0. So, this implies g is positive definite g is positive definite. Again g k j equal to inner product of alpha j alpha k which is equal to inner product of alpha k and alpha j bar. So, this is equal to g j k bar. So, this implies g is Hermitian g is Hermitian. Since x star g x is strictly greater than 0 I can say that g will be invertibles. Otherwise, there exists 0 not equal to capital X such that g x equal to 0 and then your x star g x which is equal to 0 which is equal to 0 contradict contradicts the hypothesis inner product of alpha alpha is strictly greater than 0 for alpha not equal to 0. So, therefore, g is invertible. So, we have seen g is invertible, g is Hermitian and, and uh, even the g i i I mean g j j all the diagonal entry will be also positive quantity please and g is also positive definite. So, we see that for a given inner product we are able to produce a matrix n cross n matrix invertible matrix which is also Hermitian and positive definite matrix. Now, the question is if an invertible Hermitian matrix which also positive definite is given to us is it possible to introduce an inner product in this space. So, from this I can see, so given inner product we have an um, invertible Hermitian positive definite matrix. Now, question is if an invertible Hermitian positive definite matrix is given to us is given then is it possible to introduce an 
an inner product in this space V. Answer is yes. So, when the order base is given to us, then how to define that inner product? We will define the inner product like this. For a given G, you can define alpha J alpha k inner product of alpha j and alpha k that is equal to simply g k j. So, if I define this is the functions then definitely this functions will introduce then star will introduce an inner product in V. So, when this G is Hermitian positive definite and invertible matrix is given to us, so in that case we can define the inner product in this space as like this. Now, we should utilize this concept to understand one nice problems that is called Hilbert matrix. So, let me consider Hilbert matrix. Hilbert matrix is defined like this say capital A equal to 1, 1 by 2, 1 by 3, 1 by n, 1 by 2, 1 by 3, 1 by n plus 1. This is 1 by n, 1 by n plus 1, it will continue 1 by 2 n minus 1. Now, this is a standard n cross n Hilbert matrix. Now, this matrix immediately you see that it is symmetric matrix. See what I have done it here, if the field complex number is replaced by real number, then I will have G as symmetry matrix instead of Hermitians. So, now question is can I use this concept that G is in has to be invertible when G is basically coming from as a consequence of for a given inner product. Okay. So, now suppose A is like this matrix. So, it is also symmetry matrix. Is it possible to show that this matrix is also coming as a consequence of a given inner product on a given space, vector space. If it is, then immediately I can say A will be an invertible matrix space. So, now let us see what is that space and what is that inner product which will give this matrix space. Let V be the space of all polynomial functions of degree less than is equal to n minus 1. So, let B equal to the standard order basis in V that is 1 x x square and x to the power n minus 1. So, I have taken vector space of dimension n accordingly I have chosen an order basis b equal to 1 x x square and x to the power n minus 1. Now, consider an inner product. Okay. So, let me define inner product like this thing for f and g belongs to v inner product of f and g integration from 0 to 1 f of 
x and g of x dx please. So, let me define this one please. Let me consider inner product of x to the power j minus 1 and x to the power k minus 1. Let me consider inner product this one please. Actually, I can give the name this is equal to as you know f 1, f 2 and f n. So, f i equal to x to the power i minus 1. So, the based on that I can write like this thing please. So, there is so f k, f j and f k please. So, this is basically inner product of f j and f k equal to like this thing. So, this is equal to 0 to 1 x to the power j minus 1 and x to the power k minus 1 dx. So, this is equal to 0 to 1 x to the power j plus k minus 2 dx is equal to x to the power j plus k minus 1 by j plus k minus 1. So, this is equal to 1 by j plus k minus 1 please. So, we see that inner product of f j f k equal to like this thing. This implies that if I consider g k j, g k j equal to 1 by j plus k minus 1. See, if I compare the Hilbert matrix, see k j entry. So, let me consider the second entry of second uh, row that is 1 by 3. So, g of 2 2 g of 2 2 is equal to how much 1 by 3 here you see g of 2 2 according to this formula 1 by 2 plus 2 minus 1 that is again 1 by 3 ok. So, you can check that g k j is equal to like this thing. So, this implies that your capital A is nothing g matrix since g is invertible. So, A is invertible please. So, from this we can easily show that the Hilbert matrix is invertible please. So, we will see many applications of this concept to understand more details about the error product we have to basically solve the many problems which are given in the exercise and we will see that many interesting problem can be handled with the help of inner product. So, I will continue more on this uh, topic in our coming lectures also.